All right, so did you know you can actually use uh, Python to actually communicate to a PLC read and write data from it? Um, well, you can. So how do you do this? Let me easily show you this. So I'm gonna come up and pull up. I currently have Python installed right now, but with Python, you have to have uh, some kind of editor. I choose Visual Studio. Uh, it's a very diverse and free environment. Now, uh, also too, I'm using a couple um, downloads that I got from GitHub for the actual process. And I'm going to create a new one. And this is going to be a Python project. I'm going to select new and we'll call this um, we'll call this uh, control logics uh, we'll call this control logics uh, data all right so we'll get that real quick and we're gonna make this and it makes it pretty fast I mean when it comes out to it so now we have a thing called pycom3 so what we're going to do is we're going to come in and import. We're going to import pycom pycom3. Okay, so we're going to import that. It's imported, right? So at this point, what we need to do is we can easily come in and read data from this. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's on the GitHub, you, there's actually environments where they are easily shared on how to actually you know read and write data from a PLC now I'm just going to show you how easily this will be to to grab data so when that said we're just going to do the a couple different set examples from that so first what we want to do is say from PyCom we'll say from PyCom 3 which is what we imported right we're going to import in this case we're going to do a logics driver Okay, so that is just another import, and we're importing it from what we've previously imported. Now with Logics Driver, and this automatically finishes for you, which is the beautiful side of using Visual Studio. Uh, that's why it's very helpful. We're gonna then pick our IP address. Now currently I do have my IP address is right here is 259, uh, or I'm sorry, 192.168. One five. Okay, so we're gonna say we're gonna put in our little colon and we're gonna say one nine two one six eight and we're gonna say one and five. Okay, so we're gonna get the data from that and then we're gonna say as PLC and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say print and then we're gonna print the PLC. Okay, what the output is going to do is gonna show us the information from this PLC. So let's go ahead and start and test this. Now this is going to pull up Python and it shows that I cur my current name of the processor is Servo Training 2021. The revision is a major revision of 32 and the minor revision of 11. So at that point we can actually print out more data from this. So let's do another print and I want to show you this like if I do PLC let's just say dot you can currently look and see what we can pull up connected connected size data types uh, discovery generic CIP PLC info um, major revision if I want to say major revision right here I can just get it from here um, and I could print out again actually let's pull that back up uh, pull I actually deleted something that I shouldn't. And let's print uh, another statement. So let's print out PLC dot. This time let's go after, let's see, you got, you come down here, you can look at tags if you want. You can pull up tags from it. We're just doing a simple little read right now. So let's come in here and we can get info, which info is a, a lot of data. So uh, connection open. Let's do, let's, let's see about this. Or we can do CIP path. All right, let's see what that does. All right. So some of these I'm still experimenting with. And you can see the CIP path right there. So that you can see that right there. That's the 192168. So we're actually pulling up our IP address on that. So you can see this does work. Now, again, at this point, you can package it and make uh, packages and easily see how it's running. 
But again, this is just an example of one thing you can currently use. Now, I will show you another one that you current you can currently use, which is called um, Pi Logics. So Pi Logics is very similar to what we're, we just did. So let's look at Pi Logics a little bit. So let's actually come in and make a different one. So you've seen how, exactly how to use PyCom3. All right. So if I were to come in and make a new so we'll make a new project right here. We'll come in and make a new one and we'll call this Pi Logics um, Controller. And then we'll just create. So we're gonna create a new one right here. And this one's going to be the sim similar, similar to what we just did. So we're gonna import Pi Logics. All right, so you see that right there, PyLogix. So again, I did download these and you can get these directly from a command prompt if you have an internet connection. If you do not have an internet connection, you do have to package these and move these from one computer to another. Um, so you do eventually have to get it off the internet. So basically what I'm getting at. Uh, so, but again, you can get this accomplished. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say from, uh, say from and this is going to be pi logics we're going to import plc all right at that point we're going to say with plc we're going to as com and then we're going to get a com information. So we're going to say com dot. And then at this point, we're going to pick IP address, IP address. So this is why the this ID is our this em editing environment is so helpful because it gives you all the suggestions. You don't have to be a typing expert and know exactly what. This is why I like it personally. And we're going to get our one nine two one six eight one five. We're going to utilize that again because that's what we have. The processor hasn't changed. We're going to return this, right? We're going to return this, and then we're going to return our com dot. This time we're going to get a read. Okay, this time we're going to get the read, and we're going to read a tag. Now let's go ahead and make a tag in our program. Let's go ahead and we're going to call this tag. Uh, we're gonna call this tag, uh, we'll just do this. So we'll say start PB, and then we'll say start it. Okay, so we have this in here now. We just added these tags. So I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna add, we're gonna get the tag, let's just say start PB. All right, so we'll say start PB, start PB, All right? That's currently what we have, start push button, start PB. All right, so we have that. Now we still need to come in. Oh, and one thing I failed to uh, mention here is we need to put our, our brackets in here, <clears throat> our colons. So then we're gonna say start uh, PB. All right, so that is what kind of that, that's the the culture of of the way you should you know have that. Then we we'll go to print, and then throw our brackets in there. Now what we're going to put in the print is we're going to return we're going to return the tag name, and let's just do the let's read everything. So let's return the tag name as a response. Then let's get another one and let's say return and then let's get the next one is going to be let's do value. Um, so we want to know the current state of it. All right. And let's do one more. Let's do return and then we're going to do the CC status. Um, so let's get let's drag down and get status. All right. So now we're going to it's going to print out all this information. So let's run this. OK. All right. And then current, see we currently have the start push button is a false and it's a, it's a success. So the status was a success 
and it's a false. Now, let's actually do this. Let's come over here and let's toggle this bit so you can see it change. Okay, and we're gonna hit continue. So we're gonna exit out that. We're gonna run this again. And now it's going to say true because the way a computer reads, a one is, is uh, true and a zero is false. Simple as that. So if we want to read a different tag right here, uh, we can put started. Uh, let's just put the this one right here. We can read put the one started. So we'll say started and close this out. Okay, so now we're going to read the the completely different uh, tag. Now we're going to start it again, and you can see that it's reading a different tag called started. And it's a true state. It's in the true state right now, and it was a success reading it. Now you can get different things right here. So let's return. Uh, let's return. Look at this. So we have response. Uh, this is not as diverse as one of the other ones. So again, um, let's just keep it like that. We don't. We're not building a list right now. We're not doing anything. Um, and and for this matter, uh, we can say we can actually change the order of these real quick so if we wanted to return uh, and then get the the status right here and then come in and do a return on the value just like this just like this and then run it right here then we change the order of these so we say started was a success and it's true so I just want to show you a couple different ways to communicate with a um, with Python. Uh, this is through uh, again Visual Studio, and it's also talking directly to a PLC with no communications whatsoever besides Python. So that is showing you how to use two different methods, which Py PyCom three is a lot more diverse in what it can do. Uh, PyLogic is growing. These are all open source on GitHub. You can use these um, and grow and give your feedback on what they should work on. Give your support, I would recommend, because again, when support is given, things get better. Um, also, too, when we use things, we get better. So I highly recommend that you get involved because, Py, uh, in my opinion, um, using, you know, as far as like Python and stuff like that with controls and automation. Are going to work hand in hand with a lot of uh, growth with automation. So with PLCs working side by side with uh, Python and stuff of that nature, um, can build greatly improved AI systems to help you interpret and make machines a lot better. Not to replace things, but to make things a lot better. Help you analyze things. That is what Python is devised for. Is actually you know machine. Uh, it's, it's machine intelligence, right? So understanding the way the process goes. And if you're scared about the intelligence of something, you should in, until, you know, and dig into it yourself a little bit more. And as you do, you're going to figure out it's just that much easier. Uh, and you, your worries start to worry a little bit less, right? So when it comes down to it, if you understand, and a lot of this stuff too, if you understand how to do it, if, it's like structure text is really, really close to this. So Python is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I like it. I think it's a very powerful tool. And it's very helpful for doing different things that you cannot do in Excel anymore. So currently, um, that's what I wanted to show you guys as far as using Python with two different alternate methods, one being PyCom3, one being PyLogix. Uh, again, you can get these off of GitHub. And you can simply just Google these and you can read up on them and see what they can and can't do what the limitations are, and these do talk to control logics and micro logics. So both of Alan Bradley's platforms. With all that said, see you guys on the next one.